My name is Scott Lawrenson. I'm the head custodian at St. Anthony School in Kincardine for the Bruce Gray Catholic District School Board. I've been a custodian for 13 years, but I've been head custodian for two years now. Yeah, normally I'd come in in the morning, open all the school up, uh, unlock the doors, make sure the heat's, heat and all that is good. Uh, the computer program is our, for our heating system, so it basically gives you the whole floor plan of the school, so you can monitor the school or make adjustments for every room. We do the alarm checks for the intrusion and fire system. Uh, we do playground inspections every morning. We make sure like the playground equipment's in good order and nothing's loose or falling apart. Uh, looking for anything out of the ordinary, whether it be like sharp objects or garbage or sticks. It, it covers the whole playground, like the whole grounds, not just the playground when we do that. Uh, when the kids are at recess, I well lunch recess and usually first recess because they'll eat snack before and lunch before recess. I'll go around and wipe all their tabletops, uh, collect garbage at lunchtime so that it's nice and clean when they come back in. Recently we've switched all our products to green products, so it's a lot more safe for the people using it and anyone who comes in contact with it. Generally, as a custodian, you're all around the whole building, so you're, you pick up on things that other people may not, I guess. Personally, I take a sense of pride in having a nice, clean school for everybody to enjoy and learn in. We're here all the time. I mean, the kids do look up to you and tend to trust you. Uh, a lot of the time, it's generally just like a hello in the hall, or they might say hi to me, or ask them how they're doing today, tell you how their day is for no real reason. And I generally listen to them because they like to talk to me, so I make them as comfortable as possible when they're here. Hi, John. How are you? What's up, honey? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm the first person parents and students usually meet, so I'm kind of the welcome to the school. How are you? My name's Maureen Douglas, and I'm a school secretary and I work at St. Francis de Sales School in Smith Falls. It's part of the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario. But I certainly want to touch base about you now. We usually begin the day by checking messages, checking emails, checking who's going to be away, who may be in. But no. Greeting supply teachers. Oh, there she is. Okay, we were just saying. Then we get into entering attendances, phoning home to verify. We have to verify every student that's away. Okay, well, tell her to bring pictures tomorrow. It's probably one of the most important parts of our job to make sure kids are arrived safely, that parents know, because it has happened that I will phone a, a parent at work and say, you know, little Johnny's not at school today, and they don't know. You know, the child could have slept in, whatever but parents need to know their child is safe. Because I walk to school every day and it takes me 10 minutes to get to school. Um, don't let me give you a piece of ice to kind of press on it? Yes. Sometimes that'll help. Okay. I give out mitts and hats when it's cold. I do head lice checks, which is probably the worst part of my job, but I do. I give out medication. Like we have some students who have peanut allergies, you know, they're diabetics. Like, you pretty much need to know the health of every child because we are the constant. I don't think the public knows what goes on in a school anymore. You know, the demands every day that we, we have. A lot more has landed on the secretary's plate. Like, I think because um, a lot has now gone online. Like things that maybe different um, individuals were able to do, it's all kind of gone online. And who better to do it online is the school secretary. Okay, so. People seem to convene there. Okay, I don't 
you know, it's uh, probably the hub of the school, so people stop in to check, get messages, give messages. It is the hub of the school. My name is Katie Elliott. I am a transcriber EA at Algonquin Public School in Woodstock. Those are all her friends, so there's and Fox and Fawn. I was doing a placement actually here at Algonquin, and I had a supervisor. She suggested that I get into the field because I have a sibling who has a visual impairment, and I just looked into the program, and I actually became an orientation and mobility instructor before I was a transcriber. So Tabitha is the one that usually sets out what it is that the kids are learning. And Leslie Johnson, who is a vision resource teacher, does a lot more um, of the teaching of the Braille. And my time is usually supporting them by making the material. So if they're going to be reading a book, um, I will take the book, I will put it into our computer so I can Braille it all out and then I'll make the tactile pictures. So I'm a little bit more on the hands-on getting the physical things ready. We have a copy that we have in a big binder for Livy and each page is a different letter. And on that page, we have got um, a, an enlarged picture. We've got it all um, tactile so that she can actually feel the picture. And then we've got the words in large print and braille so that she is able to follow in whatever medium that she wants to try and follow. What we tried to do with the center that she was at, which was all um, learning the sounds and getting the sounds and figuring out how to discern um, the different animals by listening to the sounds of the letters. Um, we took two pictures and we actually put it on the iPad so that we could blow it up, we could be right there, and um, she could actually see them easier because the cards themselves were not accessible. Monsters! And especially to start with a student who is so young as Libby in JK and SK, I, I'm going to enjoy, I think, watching her grow and learn um, and all the different things that we get to do because being a transcriber is not just about producing the braille and, and doing that. It's about looking at the child as a whole and figuring out what we need. Um, because, because of her vision and the fact that she doesn't have a lot of usable vision, we will be, you know, we'll have to talk about social cues and facial expressions and we have to do a lot more of that teaching that somebody with vision can just take for granted or and see every day. She can't see those things. So it's it's not just the braille thing, it's a it's kind of life. It's it's teaching life. <laughs>
I try to have activities that are engaging and fun for them. Um, like today, we're going to be looking at um, a PDF, which is a story about uh, Bethany Hamilton, soul surfer. She was the young girl that lost her arm in a shark attack. And you'll see a red box start to come. You want to make a box around the words. Time. And then click read. And at the end, I have a little QR code that they can take their iPod or their iPad and scan it, and then they get to watch a little Bethany Hamilton interview. Yeah, so you need to get the QR code where you can see it. Some students don't want to use a computer. They don't want to look different, and they, they want to be like everybody else. And so we're trying to get that stigma taken away and embrace the situation and have them use these tools and show them how this can help them and make life easier for them in school. Is that it? Oh, oh, cool. Cool. It's a video. Okay. I'm Kathleen Lay. I'm an educational assistant at St. Anthony's School in King Carden. I work in two different classrooms with students that are of high needs. I do work with a, a child that is on the autism spectrum and assist him throughout the day to help him reach his goals and follow classroom procedure. If they are focused on a particular thing, if we can do any planning or any work around that particular interest, then we'll build on that to help them get through their day and it makes their day more interesting. When they decide not to comply, you have to take a whole different uh, view of it and maybe taking a walk, getting him out of the room that he can have conversation and it brings him back to the classroom allows him to focus a little better and attempt that way to get him to, to work. Back to our room. Are you going to go do some, stamp some words? We fall under the direction of the classroom teacher. We bounce a lot off of each other and share. She's always open to trying whatever we come up with to see if it works, and if it works, we use it and expand on it. Helping them set goals and meet their goals, um, being there when they achieve them, it's very rewarding. You do build a, a rapport with the kids and when we're not always assigned to them the next year, which in some cases is good because you don't want them to, to be you know, dependent on one particular EA. But yes, I, I find it very difficult when they hit grade eight and leave, especially when you followed them up through the years. To see these young people grow up and move on to the next phase in their life, it's, it's heartwarming. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this one's called um, Not Hurting Our Friends' Feelings and, and Thinking About Other People's Feelings. And sometimes we do it without even realizing that we do it. Have you ever had someone say, stop doing that, and you didn't realize that you were doing it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. a lot. My name's Cheryl Burton. I'm a student support worker, and I work for the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario. Can you think of a time that um, someone has said something to you? Some of the programs I do speak specifically to teaching um, children emotional literacy so that when you're talking to people and you're seeing situations that you can read them well and understand them so that you don't have miscommunications, you don't develop crises, you don't always roll into problems. Is this a big rip in the back of your shirt or is that just a big old stain? Part of the lesson planning is um, trying to work him through that if you start to look at people and listen to people, that you can hear different things of what they're saying. It's how we say it and, and, how we're, and the reason we're saying it. If we're saying it to be friendly, then that we can show that. And if we're saying it to be mean, we're also going to show that as well, right? I'm a bucket filler. I'm a bucket filler. Each and every day. Each and every day. Kind things I do. Kind things that I do. Kind
The concept is that everyone has an invisible bucket, and that bucket is to fill uh, all the good things, your thoughts, and anything about love and kindness that makes you feel good. What kind of things would go in here? We've talked about them a little bit on the announcements. We did a game about them. Not fighting, being kind to one another. What else? They have power in their words, in their actions, and simple little things can um, touch other people. Hooray for you and me! Hooray for you and me! Good job. Have a seat for a minute. Education is academic, of course, but it's kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. How do you teach to someone who is not well fed or is um, under stress? I mean, those aren't the basic needs being met at that time. So it's, it's one of those things where once the basic needs are met and st stability is in place, then maybe we can pursue higher learning. So that's kind of our role, too, is to address that. My name is Sheila Graham. I'm my itinerant educational assistant for behavior for Trillium Lakelands District School Board. I support um, almost 30 schools in uh, the south part of Trillium Lakelands. I listen and then chat with the staff and brainstorm ideas. We talk about the scale of um, going from green to red and, and having those meltdowns where kids feel frustrated and upset and they could be running away, they could be cr uh, crying, screaming, yelling, swearing, hitting staff, um, spitting on staff, biting staff. And so we talk about um, coming up with some strategies that, that staff can use to be proactive. And then we also work with um, the students to help them recognize some of their triggers and their feelings before they get to um, that yellow zone and then to a red zone. Um, and so she I am a trainer for behavior management systems, which um, focuses on the personal safety and develop strategies um, for the staff. Then even being the part of my job truly is being a sounding board for staff. Sometimes when you're in the heat of it, mm -hmm. it's a little hard to step back and think of different ways. Sometimes you're just... Deb has been the consistent person in that classroom because there has been changes in staff, including the teacher and the EA's support um, several times in this fall. So for her, I've been like her cheerleader because she needed to um, know that, yeah, I can do this, I can keep holding it together. And because we've this little jelly bean that's in this classroom has been melting down a lot. Deb was asking about, well, they're still having trouble with transitions from, say, coming off the computer or leaving playtime. That's going to be very good. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. Okay. And then I made um, a couple more things because we talked When we need to um, build our toolbox, we need to have lots of strategies in there to pull out every day. It takes a long time to build up trust and relationships within schools and having our team in particular, we've been able to carry over from year to year and follow our students and see that growth and build on those successes. I'm Rob Sharp. I work at the Grand Area District School Board. I've been here for 23 years now. My position right now is an FMM. It's a building maintenance mechanic trade. It's a simple little job, but uh, it's, it's very important to a lot of the teachers to, uh, um, to keep the classrooms quiet and the washrooms working properly. And uh, most, most of my job is keeping the lights lit, keeping the toilets working. I've got three trades, actually. I've got the carpenter's license, I've got a cabinet maker's license, and I've gone through the apprenticeship for an FMM, and the FMM is just generally how a building operates, all the heating and cooling and electrical and plumbing. I just found out yesterday that the main entrance door isn't working properly, it's not latching closed and they're having a hard time opening it. Safety is just, well, on any job they say it's number one, 
and really uh, the way they treat us here, safety is number one, and we get a lot of training. We got a lot of electrical training. We get a lot of asbestos training. So this ladder could, could hardly come down at all, but if it ever falls off the hook that's up there, we'll have this safety chain on it. So there we go, a nice safe ladder. It is important that the board's got uh, tradespeople on staff because when, thing, when emergencies come up, and they sure do, uh, we can respond. <clears throat> Usually it's 30 minutes or something like that for any type of emergency. And um, you've got the tradespeople right there, ready to do the work and, and equipped with the tools to do it and knowledge. And, and they're familiar with the buildings. When you hire a contractor in, they're not familiar with the buildings or out of Valley Heights, how to get here. Um, so we can, we can do things much quicker. There's uh, a lot of information that comes over the computer. And me being so far away from the bosses, uh, I've got all my work orders right here. I'll just go down to my first class, I open up my first class, and then from first class, I go into our eBase, which is our work order system, uh, and it just, works, it just works so smoothly. A lot of people, whether it's uh, the public or the teachers or the principal, they really don't see what we do, and, and as long as everything's running smoothly, we've done our job. So the principal doesn't need to know anything, the public, they come in and the building's warm and it's clean, We've done our job. My name's Sandy Minna. I work for the Grand Erie District School Board, and my position is licensed plumber. Again, a, a sense of accomplishment that, okay, the students, the staff have their working bathrooms, have their water where needed, uh, whether it be a, a cooking class, phys ed class where they're able to shower after it's just I know the importance of each and every school and each and every plumbing related issue related to each and every school I am ready to answer my phone 24 7 24 hours a day seven days a week in relation to any of the schools within the Grand Erie District School Board At Port Rowan Public School I will be installing what they call a water bottle fill station it is a drinking fountain combination bottle filling station. It's where the students can take their refillable water bottle that they brought from home and refill it. There's a digital readout on these bottle filling stations where it shows you how many bottles of water have been filled by these. And within a three month span in the high schools, the number will read 14 to 15,000 installed about 35 of these. So that's a lot of water bottles that aren't in our landfills. And the kids just love them. They, they line up to these things, which I think is great. Instead of bringing pop and whatever else, they're drinking water and it's filtered. It's great. I love being a plumber and I like the satisfaction that I can make sure these students, while they're expanding their minds, have the facilities to use and it's operating properly. I'm Ruth McDonald. This is Sacred Heart High School in Walkerton, Ontario. Bruce Gray, Catholic District School Board. I'm secretary in the main office. I'm the attendance secretary. I do other duties too, but that's the main focus of my uh, duties is attendance. Basically what I do now is make sure that the teachers have entered their attendance. I enter all of the phone calls and emails and everything that we get from the parents explaining that your children are going to be away or why they were away previously. 
I um, do all the reports that need to be done at the end of the day. And, um, you know, I give out late slips, admit slips, sign-ins, whatever the kids need. Yeah. Connie is responsible for a lot of things like enrollment, and she also is involved with um, the supply teachers. She prepares all of the paperwork and everything for the supply teachers. And then there's Diane. She looks after the financials, and she does all of the ordering. I always say the one consistent in the schools is usually the secretaries because the principals come and go, the vice principals come and go, even the teachers to a certain extent come and go. Hi. I love my job. My favorite part of the job is the kids. I think they keep me feeling younger, dealing with them all the time. I've been, like I said, almost 26 years and I still really like teenagers. You came to talk to me because you're bored? Yeah, pretty much. No class? When you have something to sell or you're collecting money? When I have something can... to sell, she always <laughs> donates. I guess I better go back to work, okay? Okay, I'll go back to being bored. Okay. See ya. <laughs> See ya. My name is Mary Hills. I'm a Learning Commons Informationist with the Upper Canada District School Board. I am currently at uh, Athens District High School and three elementary schools. Mrs. Dillon's class, grade 12 history class, um, Mrs. Dillon had contacted me and I said, Sharon, what will your class be working on today and how can I help? Is there any research that you would like to have them look into? I can make a list. Um, and then when I found out that the subject was not covered in the LibGuide and the Virtual Learning Commons, I took it upon myself to create that. The LibGuides are a page on this Virtual Learning Commons where information is um, located and has been created by a Learning Commons informationist. And uh, it can contain links it has photographs. Um, it also has basic tools that help the student. I like to think that that's my, one of my mottos because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help and assist in, in promoting literacy, but also to help with research. And if you can, even in a small way, help a student with something like that, then I feel that I've succeeded. The look on people's faces when you help them, and I, it's not like I do it for that reason, but it's such, it's so satisfying because you've helped somebody. And I figure if I can help someone find something that they're looking for and make it easier for them or help them so they know how to do it in the future, that's the best. You put the term in, you put a comma, add another term add um, a date, add a country, um, another, uh, another term that relates to what you're looking for. A lot of times people don't realize how much is entailed with your work and it's important to, for people to know that, especially when you're working in an educational institution. They need to know that your child, their ne educational needs are being taken care of, not only by the teachers, but by the support staff. Oh, who's the star today? I'm Marcy Hall, and I'm an ECE, and I work here at Emily Stowe Public School, and it's in Thames Valley District School Board. FTK is an inquiry-based learning environment. So I will come in with a plan, and I would say 75% of the time my plan changes. I'm working with uh, Sandra Bell Cameron. Um, and this is actually her first year in FDK. She has been a reading recovery teacher and an LST, and she's really enjoying the program. Sometimes she takes the lead, sometimes I take the lead, and then the third person involved is the child. What do you have now? Tell me about them. 
sometimes they take the lead. So as long as we know, we know what's in the curriculum, we know what needs to be covered, and it seems any, any idea that comes up, we can go with. With the pirate ship, because we have a broken pulley. Noah informed me when I came back in that we have to fix the pulley. Pretty cool. Can you help? Of course you can help. Oh, no. All right. Because it's not such a structured environment, we don't cut them off. We can um, let them explore what they enjoy. And they're learning the literacy, the math, the, and it's a continuum. Every day those kids are interacting with media where we've got the smart board, we have the technology. Um, they're learning fast and furious. Yes, it calls you north, south, west, or east. All right, then what, tell me what else is on this map. A pirate ship. What's a pirate ship for? Our training, our, like our college, is based on child development. So we have two years of extensive child development. So we learn about the stages of um, development, social, emotional, um, cognitive development. We work on how to set up a room, um, rules and regulations, um, but it's all based around a certain age group. So zero to six is our focus for two years straight. Good. One of the parents right. came in and said that her little fella said that all he does is play all day. And my coworker and I, we looked at each other and we said, that is the best compliment we have ever got. Watching them grow is just amazing. And watching them from day one in September, and we're in November now, how much they've already grown, how much they've already learned. It's phenomenal. Something that has a pattern. Supporting documentation you need. And it'll come out of that account. Okay. And where could I access that form? So all your forms are in Blackboard? Blackboard. Under okay. accounting. Okay. So we're good with this? Yes. You sort of have an idea? My name is Angela Galliano. I am the office administrator at St. George Catholic School, and that is within the Ottawa Catholic School Board. You're so lucky. I love doing the mentoring because I remember I, um, starting this job and feeling like I was alone on an island. I really did. Because you look at your staff and you have your teachers who at least have each other to, you know, if there's any questions or they all understand each other. Nobody understood my job. Nobody gives you a, a manual and says this is how things are done. It's sort of, you fall into it when you go to that school. We didn't know how it was going to go with the board when they started this mentoring program. Because who wants to say, oh, I need help? Yeah. We did a, a two-day workshop on coaching for learners. We had a, a workshop on fierce conversations. You know, just if you're working with uh, your colleague and, you know, something comes up, how to handle. We uh, produced a manual, like a school manual for office administrators. You, you don't want to bother a person on a silly question, but that's a relationship that I do build with them. And No questions ever silly, and please give us a call. and. I'm Suzanne Pereira, and I'm the office administrator at Holy Cross Elementary. When you first start, you have, you're overwhelmed, and I was overwhelmed. The mentoring program was about two months after that. I went to my principal and I said, you know, I want to be competent at this position. And in order to do so, I'm going to need some support. And she was great. You know, she really directed me to the HR and then to leadership development, and this is how it got the ball rolling. She was very, very welcoming over the phone, and we set up an appointment to come to my school first, and then to hers. They count for those thousand dollars. So I, so right now I'm submitting, you know, five hundred dollars of receipts. Right. So I submit, and then once in my money dwindles, then she'll give me another thousand dollars. That she's willing to do it is awesome. I'd love to reach the point of competency and confidence where I could actually return the favor and be a mentor. Oh, big time. My name is Judy Kirkwood and I work with the Trillium Lakelands District School Board. I am an outdoor education technician and I started in 1982. Just walk slowly. People um, assume that, that kids 
play outside and, and have all the skills, the outdoor skills. But very few people have ever been on cross-country skis or had a chance to canoe. So there's, there's all sorts of uh, life uh, lessons that when they, when they come up here that they, they try out for the first time. Along underneath the bridge is totally over my head. So what you, I know. So what we want to do is we want to find out where your knees are and you don't want to go much higher than your knees because if you go in this area right here, look at it, it starts to come in back here. So the students um, ha had hip waders on and they were scooping for invertebrates and we're looking at uh, the diversity in, in our wetland, trying to determine if our wetland is healthy and if we have lots of species of different um, insects, then that's one of the indicators. And we were able to find a couple of the indicators. So the uh, side swimmer, which needs a lot of oxygen, so that helped the kids to, to determine that the, our wetland is full of oxygen, which is a great thing. He's, li he's smaller. Well, no, it's totally different species. We were able to take um, some of the, the specimens and bring them back, look under the microscope, and they get to a clear view of some of the aspects of, of the insects. And now, this is our yearly ponds, and we are part of Axe Lakes wetland area. See all this dark, dark green? They're not trees. All the thing, all the this area that's dark, dark green is actually wetlands. Lily pads, bulrushes, cattails. It's really a snippet um, to help them appreciate the outdoors, and we figure that if they uh, appreciate the outdoors, then they're going to take a keen interest in the outdoors, and and if they have a keen interest in the outdoors, then they're going to be looking out for their environment. So it's a lifelong lessons that we're trying to to give them. But however, you know what, when you take that, you're learning and you're going to take quite a bit with you. And yes. we'll just do exercises from a spelling book. That's yeah. right. We'll do some... Uh... My name is Karen Touchette. I'm a literacy instructor for the uh, Upper Canada District School Board. So now go down here. It's a school for adults, alternative education. And the ALIP program, which is the Adult Literacy Employment Preparation Program, we help students get the skills they need to either go on to secondary or to uh, for employment or apprenticeship and uh, for independence as well. I work out of two locations this year. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I work here out of Westgate Court, which is the housing unit through Cornwall Housing. We're here because we're trying to get the population that live in the units, make it easier for them to come to school. From the students that we have here today, um, there are a number of them that are going over to um, credits. So their goal is to get their grade 12 diploma. I have one student now that's here for apprenticeship. Okay, so two things. Today you're going to research the colleges and then maybe on Tuesday, we can get on to the apprenticeship. And we have two that are here for independence. Yeah, so where are you gonna go? Right here, no. Where, okay, you're gonna go here too? What I'm trying to do is uh, upgrade my uh, reading skills and uh, writing skills right now so I could run a computer. I'm really proud of myself, I'm gonna have to say that. I actually went on the internet and found out how to fix this tiller that I've been working on. I found out how to get the diagrams on the tiller. What a, an amazing feat for me. To be able to do that was, you know, it was something else and I didn't have to ask my son or... I actually was able, with the help from the teachers, which I thank very much. Um, when somebody says, you know, um, my family is no longer on Ontario Works, I now have a full-time job and we will never go back to Ontario Works. I've broken that cycle in my family, so that's the rewarding stuff. Well, the kids are a lot smarter. When students have come in or learners have come in and they said, look, I can't even help my kids with their homework. 
um, I get this mail, I have no clue what I'm reading. So when, they, when they're with us for um, a while and then they come back and say, you know what, I can help my children now. I understand what I'm reading. That's what's really, in the end, is what makes it worthwhile.